Hello guys, thank you for tuning into my channel. I'm Azrael. Um, in this video, I'm going to start off uh, to fulfill a promise from a friend uh, about Christian witchcraft and how is this shit done, right? How is it different? Maybe, all right, first of all, you're probably a, a good religion to start, good or a good interpretation of the Christian religion to start would be the Catholic Church and um, the Greek Orthodox Church, and maybe the Egyptian Okopic Church. All right, they have a lot of rituals that clearly practice magic. Okay, um, in the Protestant churches, some of the few things that still exist is the anointing of oils and such, um, or prayer cloths, where they'll prayer cloth, uh, prayer over a piece, a color cloth, or a piece of cloth. And then pin it, and you wear it like a, a form of protection, like a talisman, right? All right, let's define some words first on the concepts, okay? There are, I'm probably going to say almost every person who practices witchcraft doesn't want you to identify as a witch because they don't think Christians deserve the word witch because they've persecuted witches for so long. I can understand this line of thinking, even though it's not 100% accurate. If you practice witchcraft, and witchcraft is nothing but moving energy or using your thoughts and emotions to cause change, then you're practicing witchcraft, and just about every, well, actually, every religion does practice witchcraft to some extent, regardless if they want to call it or not. So you can, in fact, be a Christian witch. What you probably cannot be. And again, this is not my opinion. This this definition is set forth from the Bible. Now, there will be people who pick and choose whatever they want to justify whatever they want instead of just going by with the facts. And the facts is facts are, even though uh, you might not agree with me here, but Christianity and uh, you know Yahweh um, don't want you to follow other gods. So this is a uh, this is a prohibition. Uh, that these gods themselves have put forth or supposedly put forth. So they're, they're not going to, just because you, there's a, there's, a, there's a move in witchcraft saying that if it feels good, it, go with it. This is also not very true. I mean, it's, it's very true. It is very true. It is an absolute truth in certain areas, but, this, but certain ones, except for this. Are if these gods exist, they have a mind of their own. They have a will and an agenda of their own. And just because you feel like, this energy will mix with this energy and work well with each other does not mean it will because these energies are created by or are just like humans, if not created by them entirely, these energy forms. They are programmed to do certain things. You would not call upon Thor for, uh, say, love. I mean, you probably can. But why not just petition Freya? You know, a, a goddess of love. Why not? You, why why go to uh, the god of war, uh, 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 Mars? You know, to to invoke financial gain. Well, you can to if, you, if you're conquering nations or conquering peoples, robbing them, stealing their money. But there's there's other gods that work well with that energy, right? If you want to defend yourself or attack an enemy, you use the god of war. You, you don't beat your enemy to death with the goddess Venus. You just don't. All right. The gods of the Bible may have, in my opinion, have had pagan origins, but their energies have changed. They are very jealous. Um, they don't like working well with others. So this might explode in your face if you try as a pagan, if you're going to mix pantheons. I believe you can mix pantheons. They did. People did that in the old world. Matter of fact, I just did a video where I talked about where they found, um, you know, uh, carvings of, of 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 an Egyptian god uh, wearing an, uh, the god, the lost goddess of Israel, as a hat for some fucking reason. I know, I don't know. The archaeologists don't know, but they know that's what that, that's what it is. <coughs> All right, so they did it in the past, right? That's fine. Whatever. You do you, okay? But I'm telling you. All this because don't call yourself a Christian pagan. This is not, you can call yourself a Christian witch. People will disagree with you, but logically that still follows. They might not like it, but logically it still follows. 
a contradiction in statements. You cannot be inside, outside at the same time. You cannot be a, uh, hell, it's a good idea. You can't be sitting down and standing up at the same time. Pagan means non-Christian. All right, that's what it is. You cannot be a Christian pagan. You can't be a Christian non-Christian. You're either a Christian or you're not. This may sound like a uh, moving the goalpost fallacy, but it's actually not because the perimeters and what defines what a Christian is, they worship one God. They might use mental gymnastics to call it one God, even though Father, Son, Holy Spirit is three. You're either a Christian or you're not. Now, you can still be pagan and petition Christian angels, even Jesus. All right, but you would, that would not make you a Christian. That would make you a pagan that is invoking a Christian deity. Now, there's other names for that, called, like Hellenism or, you, uh, or Hellenistic, where you believe that there's multiple gods. Uh, Ominism, Ominism, which is basically a, the belief that all religions are not true, but each religion has kernels of truth uh, or be a valid path. You could be a pantheist, believing that all gods... Um, represent a higher God that we don't understand uh, or the universe, each God, which makes makes sense to me because, you know, Elohim of the Old Testament was clearly a, 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 a God of patriarchs, a God of, uh, of, uh, of the air, um, and was a pagan God that did a lot of cool stuff. You can still, within that definition, but again, you, you can't, it's, it's like this, it's like, Christians are not Jews. Christians invoke the Jewish God. You are a pagan that do not follow, does not believe in Christianity, but you invoke Christian gods or energies. You can do that, but you are either a Christian, a monotheist, or a pagan, a polytheist. So you you, you can't be both at the same time. Either if you if you worship more than one God or acknowledge more than one God, you are a Hellenist, or perhaps perhaps you can even call yourself interfaith, which um, is, a, is a real thing. And there are people that, that practice multiple religions for various reasons, for various purposes. They don't necessarily follow the religion completely, but certain parts uh, spiritually you can gain from, and that's what they go for. It's like being a, an eclectic witch, where you can talk to Hecate one day and talk to uh, Zeus the next, or talk to Yahweh the next. Okay, so let, let's understand that. You could be a Christian witch, not a Christian pagan, I'm not saying this because, again, I'm trying to tell you what to do. It's just that when you say it, it you, you are literally saying you're basically, I'm a Christian atheist. There are two different definitions, two different energies. They might share some correlations, but that does not mean that they are the same. So please don't call yourself a Christian pagan. You are a Christian witch. Um, again, you can be you, other witches who are not Christians can benefit from this and its symbolism. Because your spirituality is yours, and you can piece it together however you feel. Make your own religion for all I give a shit. Matter of fact, that's probably the most truest religion is a religion you, you develop yourself. Because it speaks to you. And whose spirituality does it matter? You! Okay, so this is the opening of Christian, Christian Witchcraft. I am going to create a playlist just for this. Thank you. Like and subscribe, leave a comment. Do it. Just do it.